quickly, I want to speak on what I titled this morning. Don't poison their mind. Don't poison their mind. And I want to take my Bible text very briefly from Matthew, the book of Matthew, the beginning of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 15. I would like us to look at verse number 11. Chapter 15, and I read, Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defies a man. Very quickly, Proverbs chapter 14, in verse number 1. Proverbs chapter 14, in verse number 1. And I read, wise woman builded a house but the foolish plucked it down with her hands don't poison their mind as you know poisons are seen in a small bottle and they are very very dangerous and the Bible also say that the tongue is the smallest part of the body, but it can key the tongue. It can destroy. Whatever you say with your mouth, you cannot retrieve it. At all. Don't poison their mind. The reason why we have seen that so much troubles and problems are in the world today, is as a result of the fact that people seem to poison the mind of one another. Poison the mind of one another. How do I mean? Take for instance, the Bible just said in Proverbs 14, every wise woman builded a house, but the foolish one plucked it down with her hand. I don't know what you gain when a woman gathered his children together and beginning to destroy and assassinate the characters of the husband, the father of those children before the children. And you hear things like this. Junior, I didn't want to tell you this before, but I am forced to. You see, that money your dad gave you last week, I actually gave it to him. To pay your school fees. Junior, do you know for some days and some months now, look at the way your dad has been maltreating me. And Junior says, Mom, how come you hid all these things away from us? He said, Because I didn't want to tell you. You didn't want to tell them. What are you doing now? You tell them. And by doing that, you are doing what? Poisoning the mind of, of those children, children against what? Their, their father. father. Right on, sir. It goes in both ways. When you're beginning to see a man bring out the witness of the wife in public, or bring out the witness of the wife and beginning to tell the children how wicked is their mother. How foolish is their mother? You are poisoning the mind of those children against their mother. It ought not to be so. Don't poison their mind. What do we see today? Every new government will always blame the old ones. Right on, sir. And every old government will always do what? Blame the, the new, new ones. One. No one wants to take responsibility. To say I am sorry, it's my fault. Don't poison their mind. The Bible says something very quickly. No time. In Esther chapter 1, when you're beginning to read down from verse number 10 to 15, we are told of the king called Ahasuerus. Ahasuerus was celebrating and the wife queen vasti was also having her own feast gather her people together and the bible said got to a time 
that because the king Hazarus was so excited and he needed to present the queen Vasti to the people because he was already merry in heart, he was drunk and happy and he said, send seven men led by Memukan, one of the chief and he said, go bring in Queen Vasti to come and show herself to the people and the men went there to come and show herself to the people there are so many people today that have shown the private part of their life to their enemy which ought not to be so a man is seeking your hand in marriage or a man is proposing you or a man is asking you out and you don't even know whether he's going to marry you at the end of the day and you have exposed yourself if that man has seen what he's looking for and he made up his mind tomorrow to say he will not proceed more than what he has seen or what he has done will you take him to court no way don't prison their mind don't present their mind in every church there are the gossipers department those are the old prophets that do not give room for the new ones to strive to be steadfast in serving God you say what is she doing we have been here tell her we have been here for years we've been speaking in tongues we've been doing all these things she did do over Sabi all this thing you are doing now, we have done all these things past. Don't worry, leave her alone. She will soon tire. She will soon get tired. She used the man to destroy, gather other women together to destroy, to poison their mind against the new converts. And before you know what, that, what is happening, that one beginning to feel, oh, if this is what they do here to disgust me, and discuss people i better stop coming here right on, sir. in every church there are gossip password department right on, sir. when you fall into their hand they use their mouth to press in the minds of the people and that was the case of absalom david saw the bible says because he fight to tane to enthrone and dethrone the father he poisoned the minds of his father's friends and followers just to enrich the throne. Don't poison their mind. When you do that, you are building a time bomb. When you begin to poison the mind of your children against their father, by the time you begin to call their father names, you are building a time bomb. And you are developing hatred in the hearts and minds of those children. A time will come, they will no longer respect their father. I hear you, sir. They will no longer have regard for their father. Why? Because you have succeeded in doing what? Poisoning the children's mind. Don't poison their mind. Don't. And the Bible says, Vasti. Queen Vasti, when they came to her, and she said, God tell the king, I am not coming. Ah! My queen, is the king that sent for you? He said, go tell her. Tell him I'm not coming. And they went and told the king and said, my queen. The queen said, she's not coming. Ha! In the presence of people. And the Bible says, the king said, no, I'm not sure. I cannot send for my wife. And she, she refused coming. Are you sure? Go and tell her. I need her. Go. I sent you. And everybody look at the king and says, no. No, no. You can't. Your wife, the queen, can't disobey you. There is a law in the land. You know, you, 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 you can't, you, no, no, this is unfair. How could the queen just disobey the king? 
no it's not it's not proper it's not proper and before you knew what was happening they decided the case of queen vasti immediately it was not the king who decided her fate and before now the queen has been misbehaving before now privately at home but that day she never knew that that disobedience was going to make her do all lose her crown somebody must misbehave for you to enter the throne i say somebody must go down for you to rise Prophesy upon your life. If there is anybody in your family that need to go down for you to rise, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Lord. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Lord. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Lord. Any friend in your life that is trying to bring you down to enrich himself, they shall go for your sake in the name of Jesus Amen. I said they shall go down for your sake in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you believe by your answer, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't poison their mind. No need to do that. I hear that, sir. They decided our case. And they said, my king, you can't go too far with such a woman. Who have disobeyed you in the public? And the king said, Yeah. You know what they did? They poisoned the mind of King Ahasuerus. They poisoned the minds of the king Ahasuerus. And the man looked and said, Well, whatever you say is abide. Abide by it. I abide. What do I do? And immediately the virgins in the land were made to assemble so that. There will be a replacement. No devil can replace you from that room. Amen. No devil can replace you from that room. Amen. No witches and wizard can betray you. Amen. Since that God has prepared for you, you shall take possession in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You shall take possession in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. On the ground, but there are no boundaries up there. As many of you that want to travel abroad, you will get your visa and you will travel. Amen. I said you will get your visa, you will travel. Amen. No power can stop you. Amen. No pastor, no devil will be able to stop you. Amen. If I hear your amen, you will take the first miracle. Amen. To get visa is difficult. Mm. Don't give room to fake rumors. Don't allow people without faith to decide your home, to decide your marriage. Asaros, listen to the voice of the elders. That was not the first time the queen, Vasti, was disobeying the husband. It was not the first time. In other words, it would have also be that the king would have just looked down on what the queen had done. But because of the people's error, she never knew that day it was going to lose her crown. May you not misbehave when your honor is to come in the name of Jesus Christ. When you stand before the embassy, may you have a war to answer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When you stand before your destiny helper, may you be confident to give them a word in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May you not mesmerize yourself before your destiny helper. Amen. If you believe with us and shout here. Don't poison your mind. That is coming. You don't present the mind of your teacher to your children. You don't tell your children, look, listen to me, my son. Listen to me, my children. Any day your teacher, your teacher talks to you anyhow, come and insult him, insult her. Let him flog you, then I'll come and tell him or her the stuff I am made of. 
I will tell your teacher that day that I am the iron lady that controls this land. Are you helping the child? No, sir. Are you helping that child? No, sir. Don't poison their mind. That's what I'm saying. And King Ahasana says, because the queen has done this, let all the virgins in the land be assembled. I need to choose another woman. I need a wife. And that was how Queen Vasti lost the crown for Esther. Everything you are doing, please stop poisoning the mind of your children against their father. If the children says their father is bad, you are the one to cover his nakedness. I hear you, sir. Tell them, keep quiet, son. Keep quiet, children. Your dad is not wicked. It's just that things are not going well with him. You are the one to beautify the minds of the children against their dad. Because any word you use negatively against their father, you are not helping the man. You are piling up hatred in the hearts and the mind of those children. And once they begin to develop that, enmity will not come. And they will no longer see their father as fathers. Instead, they begin to fight their fathers. Right, sir. Stand to your feet.